Hello, welcome back to my channel. So happy to have you here. First off, I just wanna say, if you have not watched my video previous to this one about being an introvert and the life of an introvert, I'm gonna link it up here. Definitely check that one out first because this is a, kind of a continuation of that conversation. There were some really good comments that you guys left that I really wanted to talk about. So check out that video, then come right back. But if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. You can just stay here, it's fine. Also, if you like what you hear, give me a thumbs up, perhaps subscribe, totally up to you. Let's just jump into it. So I wanna to talk today about social anxiety. And the reason I came up with this topic is because when we were discussing um, what an introvert is in my previous video, there was a lot of commentary about the kind of the, not the symptoms, but like the behaviors or the characteristics of an introvert kind of meshing in with this like socially anxious kind of behavior. I'm gonna put my hand up right now and say that I definitely am an introvert, tried and true, but I also experience social anxiety. So what's the difference? So for me, being an introvert means that I re-energize solely from being alone. I really enjoy my alone time. I have great times with my friends. I do socialize, but it's not my preferred thing to do in my free time. My preferred thing to do is to kind of hang out by myself. Social anxiety, however, is where you actually have a fear and anxiousness and anxiety really is fear of um, socializing, being in social kind of atmospheres, environments, going to events, things like that. And I do think that they're very, very different. Um, but you can have both, you can be both, but they are different things. So for me, I do get very anxious about, you know, meeting new people and, you know, going to big social events. And even if it's with tons of friends that I know, I even get anxiety about having tons of my own friends come over to my house for brunch. And I'm gonna break down a little bit of why I think I experience social anxiety. You can comment below and tell me if you feel the same, but I do believe there is a huge, strong correlation between social anxiety and things that have happened to us, traumas, triggers um, in our younger years and when we were first experiencing how to socialize, you know, as kids, preteens, teenagers, young adults. I don't know about you, but I definitely was bullied throughout school. Um, I don't know how many of us make it out alive through school without being bullied, but I don't like, even the bullies get bullied. I do think or hope that it's better now than it was when I was in school. Again, I'm in my 30s, so this was a while ago, but it still haunts me to this day. I started getting bullied, I would say, um, in elementary school, so around like 10, 11 years old. It was by another group of girls. They were actually a grade older than me. So I definitely started at that age having a bit of a fear about being around these girls. I was feeling anxious, fearful about um, you know, they would they would move on to the next school in middle school and I would have the best year of my life. I would be the only, we'd, I'd be in the top grade, all those girls would be gone to the next school and it would be the best year and then I would experience a ton of anxiety about having to go move up into their school when I went to the next grade. So this happened a couple of times when I went from elementary school to middle school, from middle school to high school. So what they did, it definitely escalated throughout um, my school years as I got older, it got worse. Around in elementary school, they were just like, I wasn't allowed to like sit here or go in these places and they'd just be like, ew, like go away. And I'd just be like with my friends, like, all right. And then when I got to middle school, they started kind of body shaming me, which when I look back is so insane because I literally was this like, just this tiny little person and they would call me um, fat so, fat ass, tell me I had a big butt, a bubble butt. And of course this is in my very formative like 12 to 15 year aged <laughs> period. And so you're, you know, your body's changing and you know, I don't know about you guys as well, but of course I was obsessed with like those got milk ads in the 90s and like that whole heroin chic awful movement that happened with like super thin um, body types being like the only body type that you would see. And so there was a lot of, you know, focus on being super thin. <clears throat> There's a lot of focus on being super thin. So at that time in my life, those kinds of name calling and stuff like that was really um, upsetting and hurtful and um, alienating. And, you know, I was 
and these it was the same girls all the time so um I just started believing that. I started absorbing what they were saying and looking in the mirror. And this is definitely where um, I can touch on it in another video about um, body dysmorphia and, uh, and eating disorders because I definitely experienced those 100% because of the bullying, as well as, I mean, as well as some very personal things going on in my family life, in my home, you know, but. Bullying had a huge part of that, and it definitely made me feel anxious to be at school. It made me feel anxious to be around other classmates. And going in, and every time I had to go to a new school, a new grade, a new class, I was kind of nervous and afraid of like who these girls had talked to, talked about me to, if they were gonna like brainwash or tell other people not to like me. So that was kind of like my whole experience through school. And then when I got to high school, they used to follow me into the bathroom and yell at me that I was fat and ugly. Or I'd be walking down the hallway and they'd be in the classroom and they would actually whisper to the hallway like, hey, bubble butt. And like, it's so crazy now thinking about it. But when you're 15 years old, that is like, it was, and I didn't talk to anybody about it because I was embarrassed because I thought that they were, they must be right because there was like a group of them just picking on me. So what they're saying must be true. And I didn't feel like talking to a teacher or a counselor or my mom or anything would help. And then when, and then it, it eventually escalated to my name being spray painted on the high school outside of our building, calling me a name and another name that, you know, basically like, like a slut shaming type thing. But, you know, I was a very um, quiet person all throughout my, like introvert throughout my whole childhood and adult life. So it was just such an extreme contrast to like who I was as a person, but I couldn't help believe what they were saying, even though I, it just wasn't true. I was also threatened that uh, at one point a girl told me that she wanted to hit me with her car in the parking lot after school but she was afraid my big butt would dent her car that's how extreme it had gotten so by the time high school was over I would say socially I was just not on my best game. I was not confident. I was extremely insecure. I definitely felt that like if anybody got to know me too much, they wouldn't like me, that I wasn't a likable person. I was, since I was such a shy, more introverted person, I was also, you know, called a snob or like a bitch or like I had resting bitch face or I was mean or I was thought I was too good for people and all these things where it's just that wasn't the case but that is what people would say about me and that's what I started to believe about myself. So definitely by the time I get to my university years, my young adulthood, I am not confident at all in meeting new people, getting to know people, putting my best foot forward, making a first impression, definitely terrified of making a wrong impression. Terrified equals anxious, fearful equals anxious. So I have anxiety as an adult because I've never had a good experience with getting to know people and trusting that people are going to get to know the real me or trusting that people are gonna understand me right off the bat. I have a big fear that I'm gonna be misunderstood and not liked, so I have anxiety. So that's what I would say is like the biggest difference between being an introverted person and having social anxiety. Being an introvert, you definitely can recharge at home, but you can still go out into the world and meet people and and you know not be afraid to say hello but just prefer that at the end of the day you get to go home and do your own thing whereas if you're a socially anxious person i 100 percent believe that it has to do with how you interpreted the world when you were developing those social skills so i have a lot of trust issues with people i have a lot of trust issues with myself that i'm not going to be able to be the person that I need to be in order to make friends and all this sort of thing. Being socially anxious as an adult means that um, I do get very nervous around meeting new people. I do get very nervous. Even at my day-to-day -day job, having to kind of like hang out with my colleagues and you know make an impression that way. I would have to say that being a openly queer person now has also affected my, my comfortability socially because in some aspects, I'm 100% confident and comfortable being myself, but I've definitely had experiences in jobs in the past because I work in a kind of an office administrative environment 
where I've been told not to be openly gay, that I shouldn't talk about my girlfriend, that my manager is a born again Christian. So again, those things kind of have reaffirmed some of that anxiety I have about meeting new people and you know being afraid of their judgments on me and before they even have a chance to get to know me. So I don't know, that's just what I wanted to kind of clear up about the anxiety, social anxiety side of things versus being, introvert, like being introverted. Um, because I do know that when I am in the right environment and I'm around people that I trust, I am a very outgoing, goofy person and I do really enjoy connecting with people. And I know I can totally carry a conversation, put myself out there and you know, really enjoy meeting new people if I just allowed myself, if I could get over the fear. So as like a 30 something year old person, 34, I definitely am working now on wanting to overcome that fear, overcome the anxiety. I wanna believe in myself. I've definitely been doing a lot of work with that little voice in my head, trying to remind myself that I am not that person that um, I was made to believe I was when I was 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 years old. And I'm actually a fully capable, interesting, exciting, intelligent person that has a lot to say to anybody who wants to listen. So let me know if this is something that you're experiencing too. Let me know if it's something you're trying to overcome and maybe some methods that you're using to try and overcome it because it's definitely something I'm still working on. Trust me, it's not easy but I'm excited to be a more confident, warm, welcoming person when it comes to meeting new people and being in those kind of social environments. So that's all I wanna talk about today. Just wanted to put it out there. And thank you so much for tuning in. Subscribe if you haven't already to my channel. I talk about this kind of stuff all the time. Comment below if there's something you want me to talk about in the future. Hit the little bell notification. That way you will get notified when my videos come out because as you know, they're not regular. They come out sporadically. And so then you'll never miss one if you don't want to miss one. So that's all for now. Have a great day. Mwah.